All right, guys, just before we start this episode, over on my Instagram, we've just hit 100,000 followers. Now, recently we did 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, and well, I did a bit of a celebration and it didn't quite go to plan, flashback. So we're not gonna do that again, despite the millions of comments, Sam do another skid. I might do a two wheel drive on later, but look, the manual doesn't really like the four wheel drive burnout. I know it's a dream of mine, it will happen one day, let's be honest. So I've decided to do something different this time. I've got a golden ticket here in my hand. Now, online, with our merchandise, there's a link down below. We've got a whole lot of hoodies, a whole lot of t-shirts. Coming in the summer, we've got the singlets as well. Now, any order over $50, I'm gonna sneak this ticket into one of the orders. And if you receive it, you and a mate will win a trip. All expenses paid, we'll fly over to Queensland, head over to Fraser Island in the Built Not Bought truck and the 80 series, if that's running. Hopefully it will be. So make sure that you go over if you do wanna win that. It is given back to you guys because that was the next most recommended thing after doing, obviously, a burnout is Sam. Let's get the chance for us to come on a trip with you. So that is exactly what we're doing. So make sure after you go on this episode, check out the website, grab some merch, and you might just get in the draw to win this prize. Good morning guys, uh, sorry about the banging in the background, we're getting the roof replaced because of some storm that happened months ago before I even moved in here. Anyway, they're replacing the sheet, so that's what that racket is, but today, or in this episode, well it's been a long time I've started a video with a bit of a vlog. Hopefully I can keep it still. But let's be honest, this thing's been around for probably three years now, a couple of years it's been finished, and it's, things getting tired. It's just, it's done a lot of trips, it's done a lot of laps around Australia, across the Nullarbor, four wheel driving, all sorts of stuff. So it's time for a rebuild. I'm gonna start from the bottom, working upwards. So in this episode, we're doing, we're gonna be doing tires, replacing suspension, repairing some of the chassis. When I mean repair, just repainting it, rust proofing, that kind of stuff. But yeah, the first thing I'm going to start with today is getting some new wheels and tires on there. Now, I've been running these fuel lethals for a long time, probably five years before I even had this car. They were on my old patrol. So, I've got a new set here, and I've gone for the new 2020 model. They're called the Covert. Look at these things. So, they're the fuel 17x9, bronze edition. Yeah, they're going 17. I went from a 17 from a 15 to a 17 because obviously it's a lot easier to get tires for a 17 these days because newer four drives have bigger brakes and 15s are kind of a thing of the past. But it was all about the sidewall back in the day, but now we get a chunky sidewall with a 17 using these 35s. So today we're gonna go get these things wrapped, get them on the truck and then start working on the suspension and chassis. So the whole tray is gonna have to come off. So that's the, the major thing and I can get right in there and start working around this back end. Right, uh, we're in the 80. The 80 is the old bus at the moment, take me all around the place, but we're gonna go down to Black Bear. Super stoked that I actually live nice and close, or close enough to Brisbane. I can actually head in, they've got their own tire change machine, so hopefully they'll let me use it, get these new treads on these rims. Now, I'm thinking of going to Mud Tire, obviously on the patrol, something nice all round. Um, we've got a sort of rugged terrain on this on this cruiser, the 80 I chose because it's a lot more beach driving, but with the patrol, I don't know where I'm gonna end up, so we'll sort of see what tires um, we've chosen for these when we get there and I'll run you through what they're designed for and uh, oh, this is got no power. Well I made it but it's pretty late. Don't know if anyone's here. Hello. Righto, so the tyres are here which we've gone for their mud terrain. A safe option because obviously my car is going to be all over the place. We went with the ruggeds on the 80 because obviously a lot more sand driving in that but these are same size as i had before the 35 12 and a half but they're a 17 instead of a 15 um, because obviously i've mentioned earlier a lot more of these modern cars have the bigger brakes and the 15s are just super hard to get aren't they tires for 15s no good yeah pretty tricky but you can get them yeah. so we'll whack these up get them fitted and then back to the shop and um see how they look on the truck good timing uh air compressor <laughs> <laughs> Rolling down the street in my six fall. I don't know the rest of the words. All 
All right, without stating the obvious too much, guys, two massive ways oh, that you can help with the channel is to make sure that you are subscribed to Built Not Bought and also check out the merchandise on our website. There's a link in the description below and all the apparel, stickers, shirts, and that is designed for you guys so that you can be part of the Built Not Bought family. There's a couple of work shirts on there and that, and obviously our generic classic shirt like the one I'm wearing. So make sure you check that out because it really helps the channel and has helped from the beginning to this point. Alrighty guys, so we've got it back in the workshop. Now those wheels and tires are on. I've also taken this opportunity as well while the wheels and tires are off to do a brake upgrade as well. So I've got the brand new rotors and pads as well to make sure this thing can pull up with the amount of weight we've got on it now. As I mentioned at the start of the episode, we're doing some suspension work as well. So come over here and have a look. I've, I've had Superior's four inch kit in there for a while, but I've wanted to change a couple of things. And one of those things is, is the rear arm. So I toyed with the idea of doing like a four link and it's really not really kind of like a race truck. It's still a street car. So I've decided to do the long arm kit on the bottom. What that means is that lower control arms longer, giving it, I guess, less of an angle. When it's shorter and you lift it, it kind of drops the diff down a bit. And when you accelerate and, and you flex, it wants to try and push the chassis up. But by having a longer lower arm, it wants to push the car forward instead of up. And it just makes it a lot more stable on the roads. Now, these I was pretty excited about. They've just sort of released them. They've been out for a little while now, but it's their new 2.5 shock. So, they're the big ball shock and they've got a fully adjustable remote resis as well. So I've been wanting to try these for a while. The Kings have been really good, but what I found is, is out of the box, they weren't ideal. They're from America. I mean, they're a race shock and it took a couple of times to tune backwards and forwards and get them to, to sort of sit right with that car. Now, my brother's been running these shocks on his Ford Ranger and I was super impressed with them. So I really want to see how they were going to fare on the patrol. Um, a few more little things I've got to change now because I'm in Queensland, the laws are slightly different here and what Superior have done, which is really good, is if you kind of install one of their complete kits with the compliance in that for the Queensland laws, you can actually get the mod plate done by installing that full kit, providing the photos and images and pretty much get it signed off that way. So they kind of make it really easy. I do have to bring it down to a three inch. Um, so it's pretty much running their full three inch kit. That's why I've had to add these new sway bars. I've got some new coils down on the ground there. So pretty much today I want to get, get the tray off um, and I'm going to take this opportunity as well just to clean up the chassis. So I'm going to pull the tray off, clean up the chassis, give it a new lick of paint, put all the new suspension arms in. And once we're in there, like being a ute, it's super easy to work on once you get that tray off. So that's what we're going to do now. Pull it apart, start getting this gear in here and see how we're looking. One thing I'm also going to do while this tray is off, we've been waiting for this opportunity. For a while now, I've had a fuel tank sitting there, a long range fuel tank. Um, so I finally got the opportunity now that I can put it in. So before we give it a clean, I'm going to pull the old tank out and then put the new one in. Obviously being the LS motor, I need a lot more range. So I've gone the Brown Davis long range tank. Um, I think it's about 140 something liters, but this one's only a 90. But what's good about the patrols is the sub tanks, they're a 90 as well. So the wagons only get a small 35 liter. So the sub's fine, that's big enough. But if I get a 90 plus a 140, what's that? What's my bad mass? 230 litres and that should get me halfway to the shops. So, get this thing out of here, put the new one in. As mentioned at the start of the video, I'm gonna do a long arm kit on this. So while we let the chassis dry off, before we paint it, there's a bit of cutting and grinding to do to put this kit in. So 
It's basically supplied with a new front mount. So the whole idea of the long arm kit is essentially to make the longer arms a lot longer, which gives you better stability on road and more flex off road. So we need to cut the original mounts off. Look, I don't want to go into too much detail exactly about how to do this because the superior kits come with a full instruction. And if things change in the future, I want you to refer to that rather than me. I still got the adjustable upper arms, which means I can set my pinion angle right. Um, but the lowers, I think, were a plus 10 to begin with. So you can actually make that adjustment using this jig here to get that same measurement. So they're going to be plus 10 on the lower, which essentially will push your diff back depending on how much you've lifted your four-wheel drive. So one thing I do need to do, though, is take the sub-tank out because right where that mount is, the tank's in the way. So we'll drop that out and then get into cutting this up and putting the new mounts in. Pretty hot in here. It's warming up in Queensland. All right, thought I'd just give you a quick little. Jesus. But I've pretty much put the new bracket on here now. Now tacked all that up, so I pretty much just got to go around and fully weld it. Do a couple of seconds at the time, make sure it cools and doesn't get too hot, and then pretty much clean it up and get it ready to paint. So it hasn't been too much of a drama. I'm going to keep going, working on this, so I can get some paint on here, and get the thing moving forward. All right, there we go. It's kind of late, but there it is. The long arm kit is installed. We've finally finished off both sides and you can see the difference of the length of them here. I'll give you a bit of a before and after photo you so you can see where the mounting point is and understand how much of a sort of flatter angle that lower arm is. So it's not in the way of getting hit and stuff now. And then when it flexes, it's not trying to push that chassis up. It's trying to push it forward because that arm is so much more flat. It's getting late. So I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow the next day. Right, so I've got all the chassis painted now. I just did it with a coat of um, rust inhibitor. It's kind of like a, a rust proofing coating just to clean it up. But now we can start putting the rest of the suspension in. So we've obviously got the new coils now. They're the new superior coils. And um, obviously we need to bring it down from the four inch to a three inch. Uh, but the cool thing about that and something that you should really be aware of is when you do auto coils, there's different weight ratings. So depending on how much weight's on the back, if you give the guys a call, there's an awesome service team there and you can tell them pretty much everything that's on your car um, weight wise and they'll be able to pick a coil to suit. Uh, Cause the last thing you want is like a six inch lift and then you end up with like four inches because the thing's too heavy and it's drooped down, so. Got them. All right, so I've got the upper control arms out now. What the upper control arm does is I've gone the adjustable arm, which means I can change my pinion angle because as the car lifts, it wants to roll the diff forwards. I think it's forwards anyway. But essentially to make your drive shaft not have any extra shake or vibrations, you want to have your pinion angles, which is the face of the diff yoke and the drive shaft or the um, transfer case end to be dead flush. Like if you're on a bit of a back angle, you want your diff to match that same angle. So to be able to adjust that is with these upper control arms. But for a base, like this was set up for the four inch and we're only going down to a three inch. So as a base, I'm gonna set it up exactly the same as this one. And then from there, I can tweak it to make sure the pinion angle's right. Oh, to celebrate the bolt getting out, I wanna do a giveaway. <laughs> But I do actually want to do a giveaway. What should we give away? I feel like giving away a bit of a merch pack. So I've got, coming into winter, we're going to do a singlet, a classic tee, two stubbies, and a windscreen banner. Now, to win this, what should we do? Uh, oh, I know. Tell me in the comments down below what car you've got. I want a list of all your cars, and then I'm going to go through and pick a random winner. I know that's a random thing to say, but I want to know what kind of stuff you guys are driving, whether it's four-wheel drive, whether it's street machine, whether it's rice burner, Japanese, whatever, let me know what you've got rolling in the shed there. And um, I'm going to pick a random comment to win that merch pack. There you go. That easy. Now everybody knows it's from Brown Davis and they're going to go buy one. Right. Fuel tank. Let me just have a quick read of the in instructions. They are, uh, yeah. 
It goes in the car and then petrol goes inside. Basically, the old Brown Davis tanks, they're a fully steel tank, so they're strong. You don't need to run that bash guard underneath. And this is a larger capacity one, which gives me more range. So 148 litres, I believe it is. Um, and there's internal baffling as well, obviously, to stop the thing swirling around with so much liquid in there. If you go around a corner, you don't want it all to move to one side, change your weight, your centre of gravity. So there's baffles inside there, bracing, all that kind of stuff to keep the fluid where it needs to be. But the cool thing is it uses the factory sender. So I'm going to pull the old sender out of here and drop it inside this new one and everything should work perfectly. So that's why this little section is lower so it doesn't affect your um, fuel tank level and your pickup for your fuel pump. Another thing that I did have to change, which probably won't be an issue for you, with these tanks, obviously to get the more capacity, they're actually higher for the top end. Now the fuel filler was fouling on my exhaust. So I put the word out on Instagram and I had Nathan come around and do some ticking just to sort out the exhaust and change the angle there. Um, so that's given us the clearance to make sure this tank can go in there. Shit. <laughs> I came down here with a rudder gun, no screw. <laughs> All right, it's like Christmas over here. Everyone, like, this is like the favorite bit of bling on any four wheel drives, the new shock, so. These are the Superior 2.5 Remote Resi. On your Resi, you've got your um, compression control, or sorry, dampening control, which is a shim stack inside, changes the height, lets the more or less oil flow through, basically. And then this one must be compression adjuster, which is new, I've never had a shock with them, so it's interesting to see how that makes it behave. And what I really love is these Resis are actually on a, like a bit of a spindle seal there, so you can rot rotate it, rot rotate it, that's what I was gonna say. Rotate it to any direction you want, which the ones I used to have didn't have that and you kind of were forced to put it in a certain position. So that's really nice. Side note, side, side, side note, very unrelated, but kind of. The 80 series blew up this morning. I'm pretty sure it blew up, I don't know. TJ dropped it off. I'm not saying he's the culprit, because he's not, because it made it to here. But he's dropped it off, and I've just jumped it this morning to go do some rubbish dump stuff. Oh, you gotta unlock it from the passenger side, hold on. And it made this horrible noise. I'll see if it'll do it again. I don't know what's wrong with it. Ugh. If it was like a big end bearing, it'd still run, but it's just... Oh my God. Oh! I feel like that's just chewing the flywheel. <sighs> so, I don't know. Lucky I'm going to be putting a new motor in this soon. So, stay tuned for part two of the build of the 80. Piece of shit. All right, we are back in the rig. It is good to be back on the road. Now, tell you what, sway bars make an immediate difference. I hadn't run them for a little while and they definitely have made this thing more stiff on the road, which is great. I've driven around for a little bit, obviously went straight to the servo to fill up the tank because that's pretty much empty at the moment. So we put 100 and, it was about 140 litres went in there. So that's all filled up. And when it comes to suspension, the only word I can say to describe it is plush. It's really nice and plush, just smooth. Still got plenty of um, travel in there, but on the street, it's really nice. Like it's pretty much driving like the factory patrol would have back in the day. But we've got to try this thing off road. So this weekend, I'm heading to Cruiser Park. There's a little meet out there. So I'm gonna go try this thing. I'm actually taking the canopy off so I can try a bit more of the harder track. So stay tuned for that. It'll be next week or the week after. Heading to Cruiser Park, see how this thing performs with the new long arm kit and suspension. And um, we'll see you guys there. Make sure to subscribe, check out our merch on our website, and I'll see you there. Don't forget about the competition we're running, guys. If you want to win a trip with me and the Build Not Board Truck over to Fraser Island, make sure to jump onto our website. Any order over 50 bucks, you go on the running to win that golden ticket.